Okay, Mitchell, uh, do you mind showing me what you brought for show and tell? This is a Cadillac converter. <laughs> it will change your car into a Cadillac, I'm told. This is a, I think he said a C3PO. Uh, this is called a regurgitator valve. And then this, as it's the same thing, but a bigger one. Okay. Well, how correct was he on all of those? He was close. <laughs> he, he may have to give it a sniff and a lick to really know for sure, but he was pretty close. Yeah, I mean, how do I really know if I never licked it? <laughs> we better cut these in half then so you can lick the inside and get a better sample. Sounds good, Dan. First one. You said this one was a something. I don't know. You were wrong anyway, so. That is. Uh, stop playing with the clay. I'm trying to get it off, Dan. <laughs> What's part would be best to lick to get its knowledge? Probably the copper. <laughs> <laughs> yep, that's copper. Okay. It's a good start. Um, this moves. To let um, exhaust gases into the engine to burn them again. That's my best guess. <laughs> Chuck seems surprised. <laughs> that's I at that's face, pretty cool. Yeah. <laughs> copper, it's a coil. Many, many lines of copper wire that creates a magnetic field. They pulse this thing at about 128 times a second. So rather than that valve going all the way open and closed, it just kind of hovers in a particular spot. And so it meters the amount of exhaust gas from the exhaust manifold back into the intake manifold. I feel like it's the same thing I said. Pretty, it's pretty close. <laughs> this is an ignition coil. coil. Yep. Nailed it. Okay. What do you got, Mitchell? Okay. Different different type of copper here. <laughs> uh, these copper windings um, are used to uh, as more of like an amplifier for the electric signal to create a spark um, that then will ignite the gases. <laughs> so this and this are essentially the same thing. This one was just a smaller one that had two well, it's a single bank that would then power two different cylinders, whereas this one is three different banks that then powers six cylinders. So this, ooh, that's kind of cool. This is uh, the exact same thing. We cut this one on an angle, though, so it gives us a slightly different view compared to that. Yeah. This inner coil is the primary windings, so that's connected to the... 14 volt, 12 volt, 14 volt. Just straight out of the battery. Yeah, system. And then as that thing is turned on and off rapidly, the magnetic field, like Mitchell said, it, when it collapses, it creates a very high voltage signal. Which then goes to the spark, spark plugs. plugs right. So it's going from 12 or 14 volts up to about what? 20,000 volts. 20,000 when it something. goes to the spark plug? Yeah. I can confirm. <laughs> if I hit the wall, then everyone watching this has to buy a knife. Okay. <laughs> hit it. I was close though, you almost hit that conduit instead of the wall. Luckily, everyone has to buy a knife. <laughs> Reveal it. What piece is falling out? It's honeycomb. Does it taste like honeycomb? There's only one way to find out, Dan. You wanna look at long ways? It does not taste like honey. <laughs> Not even a little bit. Would you recommend doing that? I would not recommend that. Now that you've got a good taste for Ooh, it. There's um, like shiny platinum glitter coming off. 
Oh, uh, yeah. Is that like a... What is that? Glass pack oh. type stuff, maybe? Hold on. Did we just strike it rich? Is that what I think it is? Probably. Is that enough to make a grill for my teeth? <laughs> <laughs> is that platinum? It's either glitter or platinum. <laughs> <laughs> Looks like the glitter stuff is uh, just part of this insulation there. The platinum is really fine particles all throughout this mesh. We probably won't be able to see them, right? Probably not. Okay. We're poor again, Mitchell. Would we be able to taste it though? I wouldn't recommend flying. <laughs> He's only saying that because the camera's rolling. <laughs> you guys should have heard him when the camera wasn't rolling. <laughs> he was telling us how good platinum tastes and we gotta try it. Do you know what this, like there's two different meshes in here. Do you know what they are? No, this is... Well, I licked it, so I know. Uh, one was platinum coated and one's rhodium coated. Rhodium. That's right. Really? Impressive. Oh, this guy's doubting me all the time. <laughs> the rhodium helps reduce nitrogen oxides, and then the platinum or palladium, they use both, helps to. Which is that care. one? Yeah, the, the larger probably yeah, takes care of the hydrocarbons and carbon monoxide. Well, hopefully, you guys learned something about Cadillacs and converts, but. Uh, what do we have here, Mitchell? Line? Wait. We have knives, Dan. <laughs> a while back, we started advertising uh, water jet knives. And these are knife blanks that we are cutting out for the DIY knife maker. Um, this is everything that we are offering now, including a new design. Yes, that one. <laughs> this is the new design that we have released this week. We're going to try and release new designs very frequently. And uh, yeah. We've also made some changes to the website. We now offer uh, a new knife steel. We offer 1095. Um, that's the new one. Then we also still offer 01, D2, and S30V. Uh, we've also added paracord if you want to make a handle. So this is a paracord that still has the core in it, so it's a little beefier. Or you can pull the core out of it and it'll lay a lot flatter. So you can now add paracord to your knife um, if you want that shipped with it too. All you need to do is sharpen it. You could get something like this, you file it or grind it down, and you got a knife. Nice. Knife. You mean knife. I get it. I get it. Knife. We'll have a link down in the description, or you can just type in waterjetknives.com and start browsing around. We should have called the company Noif Noifs. <laughs>